Uh, Greetings, Ranger Geeks uh, and Morphing geeks. Freaks. Welcome to the Morphomania Six. Podcast. It's time uh, to recap and review four, another three episodes three. of Mighty Morphin Power Ranger Season 1. With us, the Harvey Weinstein of Power Ranger Good Podcasting. God, what the hell? Oh my god. Well then. After, after 10,000 years, he's free. It's humanoid. Oh fuck, I can't believe you've done this. Uh, uh. <laughs> Oh, uh, I am just shook from that Harry Weinstein comment. Hello, I'm a humanoid. <laughs> he has a simple explanation for that. It's the Doif. I'm Doif Man. <laughs> and it's me, Mighty Morphing John Ashton. <laughs> <laughs> John Ashton, by the way, is, uh, I'm, I'm looking it up. He plays Detective Taggart in Bill Beverly Hills Cop. Taggart's dick is hard, but he won't let you know because he's the boss. Yeah, I ain't on duty, so my dick can be hard. You dick. Oh, yeah, him. Yeah. Oh, wait. Detective Taggart. I'll have to double check that again. Credit to Damien for giving me the idea for that name. Uh, shout outs. Oh, wait. Yeah, John Don't... Ashton from Beverly Hills Cop. Oh, okay, yeah. He he was the more stickler cop in that movie. Yeah, yeah. it's been a while since I've seen uh, Be Beverly Hills Cop. Judge Reinhold was a tall looking one. Billy, you know, you don't have to be embarrassed if your dick gets hard. Yeah. You know, they actually just released a trailer for uh, the new one to, just to quickly talk about that wall, wall, wall once more. I actually want to mm -hmm. see that movie. Beverly Hills Cop 4. Why not? So, to get to today's episodes, firstly, we're taking a look at just uh, the last uh, one-parter in this era, and then we finally reach the end of an era. What do you mean, <laughs> end of an era? What? Green Candle. Oh, oh yeah, but he does Sorry, turn. you're right. Even era is a different song. That was the end of an era Hell in a Cell match. Well, wait, if that's a Metallica song, that's... Fortune, fame, mirror. No, it's a great song. Yeah. I've listened to them play it like twice live and it's been wicked. So uh, who's opening this time? That would be me uh, with season one, episode 33, The Yolks on You. Air date, November 16th, 1993, uh, written by Cheryl Saban and uh, an old friend, Terrence H. Winkless. Winkles. Winkless. It's at this point I literally went and asked, how many episodes of this show did he direct? And I looked it up. He directed 38 episodes of Mighty Morphin. Sounds about Holy right. crap, that's a lot. Yeah, he's done that. He's done a few episodes of Zeo. He's done a few episodes of Beetleborgs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that shit show. You know, I still can't believe I sat through the entirety of that and Metallic. Meta yeah. Oh God, Metallics! Uh. <laughs> and he did. He also just just to get it out there. He also did a few episodes of Mass Rider. I didn't watch Max Rider because of that furry fucker on there. Furbus. 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 Yeah. Fur fuck Furbus. What the fuck is that? Fucking Furbus. Yeah. I also, I, I was curious as to see what else he has directed. Uh, he directed a couple of really fun, uh, cool 80s movies. So there's a horror movie named The Nest. The Nest. That he directed. It looks kind of stupid, uh, but I, I love this name. He also directed a film named Blood Fist. Starring Don the Dragon Wilson. Blood Fist. The ring of the most awesome human weapon. Which is just a bootleg blood sport. I really hope the soundtrack is at least as good as blood sport because that's what made that movie good to me. That and the Jean Claude Van Damme-isms. Yokes on You opens at the at, uh, Angel Grove High and uh, Tommy and Jason in karate uniforms walking through the halls. And then they come upon Ms. Principal Kaplan again. Good to see him back with his Tom Selleck mustache and his toupee that it falls off at the slightest breeze. Oh my God, Tom Selleck mustache? How did I not see that before? Uh, I cannot see that now. <laughs> yeah, so turns out there's a talent show happening at Angel Grove High. Ernie is also helping with it. Brini is basically acting as prop master, and there's a lot, been a lot of problems with props at this moment. And we get the shot 
of everyone in in the gymnasium for the talent show. Uh, like I said, Tommy and Jason are in karate uniform. Trini is dressed normally. Kimberly is dressed pretty normally, except she's got pink booty shorts. Billy. Good old Billy. Bill, Billy is dressed up like Garth Brooks. <laughs> just, just Where are the dead bodies, going, Garth? Oh, Where are the dead bodies? Oh. Where are the bodies? The families need closure. He's about to cry. He's thinking about all the bodies he's got stacked. Good cover. He's clearly uh, a hick, as it were, at this point. And then Zach is dressed in the most 90s pants I have ever seen with like a bunch of shapes and colors. I actually wrote for uh, for Bit Bailey here probably one of the funniest notes I've ever written for anything in this show. I, I just wrote Cowboy Cookie. Cowboy Cookie. Cowboy <laughs> Cookie. <laughs> Yeah, Cowboy Cookie is a highlight of that show. Oh, what am I kidding? It's all a highlight. I, we get we get a shot of some of the other talent uh, people showing their talents, and all I'm saying is, like, in every talent show, there's a mime. Where's the mime? He's invisible. He's in a box. He's stuck in the box. <laughs> yeah, he's stuck in the invisible box. He's in a glass box of emotion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a glass box of emotion. <laughs> then we cut to Bandora Castle, and Finster is at the Monster Matic talking about about how this monster is really great and it's gonna make Rita really happy. Little did he know, he sent Peter Lori to Earth. <laughs> Planet Earth, I'm here. Yeah, it ugly. looks like exactly like Peter Lorre. Peter Lorre is one ugly dude. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, that's... Fang, right? Yeah, Fang. Yeah, Fang. Fang is his name. They don't mention it until later, but his name is Fang. He's the monster of the week, and he speaks in a very Peter Lorre accent, like an Igor Peter Lorre. Like, not like eh, a... Eh. Not a, not, not a rant at the end of the Maltese Falcon, Peter Lorre. A fucking, uh, a fucking Frankenstein's assistant bitch, Peter Lorre. <laughs> I'd say it's more closer to the impression version of him from that one Looney Tunes cartoon where uh, I believe it's the first of appearance of uh, Gossamer. People! <laughs> the big red furry thing that chases mm -hmm. around bugs in like two or three episodes. Oh yeah, yeah. that thing, yeah. I mean, to be honest, if uh, actually I think I have a better mark on this. He actually sounds more like Engine from Crash Bandicoot. Back off! Or be deleted. That's a good reference. I, I like that one as well. Yeah. Fang, by the way, is voiced by Michael Sorek, right. uh, who is a very prolific uh, actor, a uh, voice actor. He's done a lot of video game and anime work. Malcolm would probably know him best as the tar monster from Scooby-Doo 2 Monsters Unleashed. No, you are stuck in my trap. Holy crap. Wait, like the game or the movie? The movie. Mm -hmm. That movie like really stayed in my mind, like rent free for a very long period of time, but specifically that exact monster because if you want to get technical that monster almost fucking killed the Scooby gang all of them he really almost did and the Scooby Doo <laughs> Monsters Unleashed movie actually felt like a damn Scooby Doo cartoon he's the Thanos of Scooby Doo villains he actually almost succeeded in winning yeah mm. right it's fucking crazy Fang is here and he's here for one thing eggs. and it's eggs egg <laughs> Egg. Eggs. Egg. A cartoon oh, image yeah. of, of Egg Big Show. Yeah, he's looking for Bald Big Show or okay. Edge. That's the one and only OSW ripoff reference we'll do in this episode. I promise. Cross his fingers. To be fair, it is pretty funny <laughs> seeing a Bald Big Show look like an egg. It really is. is but I, I also, uh, like for context, we also call Edge that as well. So I just imagine Bald Edge like on an egg. Attitude Era egg. podcast always also calls him Egg. <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot of people call him an Egg. I don't think we're stepping on any toes by calling Big Show an Egg. No, no, Edge is Egg. Oh, that too, yeah. Bulk and Skull are here. They find some boiled eggs in the back. On the eggs. I found the eggs. Egg. On the eggs. On the eggs. And uh, Principal Kaplan comes in and is like, what are you guys doing? Skull comes up with a very good excuse like, oh, Bulk was just back here to check our instruments. He just wants to see that they're good. And then Kaplan throws it right back at him like, like, okay, that explains bulk. Now, why are you back here? <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then Skull pulls symbols from uh, off screen and says, oh, I'm just checking my symbols. Principal Kaplan, smash, there goes the toupee. Also, I really need to point out Bulk and Skull's outfits here. Bulk looks like a 90s hobo with a giant, like, a bean toque. Like, a very fat toque. It doesn't work on him at all. And the leather jacket is, is it's, it's pretty good. But Skull's the real highlight. The chain, like, leather 
fucking spike studded jacket uh and the sunglass monocle <laughs> yeah oh i forgot about the monocle it's so good he looks like he just walked out of the blue oyster move it move it move it oh no 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 as a kid, I never understood that joke. I thought, like, why are they scared of these men? And then I grew up and go, like, oh, they're getting annihilated in their butt. Yeah, they're getting, <laughs> getting an annihilation for free. We work hard. We play hard. <laughs> and after the, uh, the the blue oyster there, speaking of blue oyster, here comes the blue piranha. I think it's supposed to be a catfish in Jew Ranger. Really? It's hard to tell. I, I don't know what it's supposed to be in Jew Ranger. Oh, by but... the way, sorry, you forgot to mention uh, Tommy's side quest because he said he forgot the belts and he had to oh, go. Oh, yeah, I did forget Tommy's side quest because they forgot the belts. And that's his yeah. reason for not being yeah. there. So he had to go for his side quest. Or where he spends another side quest fighting like an another bunch of putties and probably ends up leaving his communicator so then we cut back to bendora castle and uh rita is like who sent this monster to earth without my consent <laughs> goldar speaks <laughs> bad goldar again it's a shit voice again the inconsistency continues the good news is it's only for this episode <laughs> thank god uh but we get the actual re revelation that finster sent the monster to earth for rita's birthday happy birthday happy rita. birthday rita <laughs> she says oh well it's great that he did that and all but the monster is probably going to need a hand so goldar squat babu you guys uh you guys head out and uh, help the catfish help fang and then they just they, they just pop out of the frame like they're instant transmission again no effects they just one frame they're there the next frame they're gone then we cut to tommy walking through the park headed for uh to wherever her, their belts are and he and, kicks uh, a leaf <laughs> yeah he kicks a branch like what the fuck did that tree do to you tommy He's like damn tommy you have some sexual frustration there <laughs> he, he looked at that branch is like you stole my color <laughs> then we get a putty fight where the putties act like monkeys they always act like monkeys though yeah but this is the first this is the first time i noticed it oh okay All right. they really do act like they're just orang like gibbons like mm. some long long-armed monkey fucks Go they're ahead. the world's uh worst uh chimera creation done by that uh one superhero from uh that uh batman uh cartoon batman the brave and the bold wanna beast wanna beast how you doing my legs are fine. He had like a weird luchador mask and he could like take two animals and combine them together. What? That's so and make fucking stupid. So, okay. Yeah, it's All right. so stupid. Worse than the Clock King? Yeah. Okay, Clock King was cool. Clock oh, King was cool. I mean, it's I mean, Condiment Eggman. King, you think it's stupid. Condiment Man, yeah. Eggman. Condiment, Condiment King. King. Condiment King and Eggman. Egghead. Eggman. Egghead. Egghead. But I give Egghead a pass because uh, Vincent Place played him. Yes. Explain. There's a one fun spot in this putty fight that I like to mention. He grabs a couple of putties by the arm, flings them back to back against each other, and then kicks them, and bells ring. <laughs> And I thought that was pretty funny. But unfortunately, this fight was for naught because one of the putties grabs his communicator. He didn't leave it in the bag. Then he backs into a trap. And yes, he is snared by the most powerful being in Power Rangers history, Annette. <laughs> every time <laughs> every time the fucking net <laughs> and then is more for uh, falls from the net more for falls from the net the communicator does not uh, then we cut to uh squat babu and goldar out in the field uh squat and babu are complaining about being hungry and then they see two eggs On the eggs. squat immediately runs down and grabs an egg cracks it open and starts drinking it raw like he's rocky or something oh god <laughs> Just, just complete, just barbarians, just like not cooking it, just like as you said, just full Rocky one, just pull when he drinks it up, and you can see it going into his fucking gullet. It doesn't even look like a norm, like an egg. It, like there's no yolk. It looks like it was already scrambled, like it was already whisked up and then poured into his fucking mouth hole. Mm -hmm. Then Fang shows up, and Fang is like, "You ate my Goonie bird eggs." <laughs> He's like, "Do you know how rare these?" These things are you can't just go buy goonie bird eggs at a store and then squat says they were good <laughs> 
<laughs> you want to you want to <laughs> tell them what it was from the Sentai version because it's dark as fuck. I wonder what's happening in the darkest timeline. Yeah, I mean, in the Sentai version, uh, Fang laid those eggs, and uh, yeah, Squat just drank her, I guess, children. And yeah, that that's that's the plot point. Yeah, watching this scene, this now and knowing about the backstory is like Fang crying about, oh, you eat my Goonie Bird eggs, and he's crying over fucking lunch. Meanwhile, you know the backstory is like, oh damn. And also, I pointed out in this scene that Fang's eyes look like giant eight balls. That's what that happened there. Back at the school, they are still waiting for Tommy. Jason's really uh, worried about it. And then what was it? It was either Trini or no, it was Kimberly. Kimberly says, oh, what did he go to Japan to get those karate belts? I, I understood that reference. He's well up since he does this like every single time. Yeah, at this rate. Yep. It's fucking crazy. And then perfect time and the communicator goes off. And then they, uh, as is tradition, go like five feet out of the public gymnasium into the public hallway and then get teleported to the command center. It's always that hallway. People can see you. Also, fun fact, Kim's line to Japan. Yeah, did you go to Japan to pick up the black belts or what? The actors did not know this was a Sentai series until years later. It, it is pretty crazy. I they get teleported to the command center and Zordon gives them the sticky icky about Fang. <laughs> sticky icky. <laughs> so Zordon, give me the sticky icky. <laughs> give me the lowdown on this. Oh, you're on a real low now. Get sorry ass out on the street. Uh, Jason is pissed off. He says, uh, Zordon, uh, what's going on? And Jason, J uh, Tommy do not answer his communicator. <laughs> Uh, the tortures I think about when you use that voice. I, I, I'm going to denied pain. pain without love, pain. I get enough. <laughs> I I look Malcolm. I want to say I'm sorry. I love, I love this voice too much. Zordon explains that oh Tommy hasn't been picking up his communicator. Kimberly's like oh, we should go help Tommy first, and then Zordon negs Tommy while he isn't there. He says oh I'm sure Tommy can handle this on his own. You guys need to deal with Fang. Damn Zordon. And now, and now Zordon's negging on Tommy. Yeah Tommy negged on Kimberly so hard that now fucking Zordon is negging on Tommy. They more and then they cut to the, the fight. Everyone's there. Goldar says, oh, uh, the Power Rangers have all the Goonie Bird eggs. If you go over there and defeat them, you can have all the Goonie Bird eggs you want. And then Babu says, with sprinkle venom. Yeah. Ew. Babu is amazing. They fight as per usual. Fang is actually doing decently well until he gets a few too many slices to the back, gets knocked away. And then Babu, Squat, and Goldar run into the frame and Babu says, better leave or I'll be forced to raise my voice in anger. Go get him, Fang. I'm telling you, Babu's the goat in this episode. Yeah. But that it has the same energy as, you know what? I don't care that you broke your elbow. <laughs> <laughs> I love that fucking clip. It's very funny. And they, once again, uh, with with Goldar's help, they fight the Power Rangers off and have the ability to uh, get away with uh, another flaming sword attack from Goldar. They get away. Fang is pissed off because he doesn't have his Goonie Bird eggs. Eggs. That's some good lunch. Yeah, I guess these eggs, eggs. are really, really good. If, uh, <laughs> if not, Fang would not be bitching. And then Fang goes away from Squat, Babu, and Goldar, and he's off by himself, and then Rita starts laughing. <laughs> Rita is now there. He says, what's so, hey, what's so funny? What's so funny? R Rita says, oh, I'll, if you listen and obey me, I will give you all the Goonie Bird eggs. Eggs, eggs. Gosh, ain't I repulsive? you want and then fang is like prove it and rita's like okay look at this and then she aims her staff at a couple of broken goonie bird eggs on the floor and she there's a fucking pokeball sound <laughs> as she repairs them <laughs> also when she repairs them his tail is shown and i swear to god it looked like a dick that's a dick uh yeah i hope you didn't bring that up it really you, you pointed it out and i hate you for that <laughs> minus five stars you lose good day sir and then she breaks them again with another pokeball beam that's the plan is now after he swears allegiance to rita she just makes him grow out of nowhere and she's like what two three feet away from him and he she froze a thing like literally right next to him 
and yeah. she throws it. It's like, okay, fair enough. But uh, good job uh, alerting the Power Rangers where they, where you are and also that they need the Zords. Speaking of which, they make the Mega Zord. Two Zord sequence. The best. And as they all jump into the Zord, Kimberly's line, is, that really like spoke to me. Let's nail this fuck tooth bully. But the way she said it, it sounded like, let's get this fuck tooth bully. <laughs> <laughs> let's get this Fuck tooth out of here, bitches. I don't even know if that's PG. Wait, no, what if he said, what if she said, let's get this fuck tooth, Billy? Let it alone gets two snaps up. <laughs> I almost said that, and I was really hoping that someone else would bring it up. <laughs> oh, oh my, my god. god. <laughs> and your t shirts are too tight, too, Billy. <laughs> you think you can wrestle the toll package? I don't know. I'm pissed now. I don't even know what it's called. What's it called? <laughs> Super Brawl Saturday? Uh, oh my god. Yeah, it's amazing. Gold. Uh, truly gold. <sighs> so, anyway, they form the Megazord, and there's a, literally like a very small fight. Like 30 seconds, this fight lasts. And then it ends with Fang actually pushing the Megazord away, and you know, it lands on the ground. We cut back to Tommy, who's been in the net this whole time because it's the most powerful being in power rangers boy if you don't get we finally he finally slipped out of the net and is now hanging onto it and he swings and double kicks the two putties that are guarding his morpher and communicator and he kicks one putty and doesn't even touch him after that he does like a little martial arts sequence he doesn't even touch the putty and he goes down and then he morphs and summons the dragon zord damn it dave Dragon Zord comes walking over and they immediately make the Dragon Zord in fighting mode, which means they reverse the footage on the Mega Zord. Q Ultra Sequence. The no, it's not even the Ultra Sequence, it's just the Dragon Zord in fighting mode and the T-Rex fighting Fang for a bit. By a bit I mean literally like two swipes of a sword and one claw attack from Fang, and then they immediately go into Ultra Zord. <laughs> okay, there's the Ultra Sequence. Also, instead of fighting out in the mountains, they have a new setting where they fight near a dock or a dam. The well, warehouse they're... district. Yeah. Yes. Because <laughs> it's an actual warehouse, which we've confirmed is not a building. Then they fight, and the Ultra Zord comes out and absolutely destroys Fang. Fang disappears, and then we cut to a like a five seconds of Rita on a green screen saying, You'll pay for this. I can't even see. Then cut to Cowboy Billy. Yeah, we cut to Cowboy Billy and everyone back at Angel Grove Hive for the talent show. Ernie sees them walking in and is like, where the fuck have you been? Damn, I've been kids. stalling the crowd for 30 minutes. You're on. You're expelled. Ernie, you don't have that power. Yes, I do. Ernie fuck him. It turns out that Ernie's himself. vice principal. <laughs> vice principal Ernie. I'm so <laughs> for that. We get Tommy and Jason's martial arts performance for the talent show. And it's actually pretty cool. It's like a normal, basic, you know, karate pattern that you'd probably learn for like your blue belt but it's very fun and it has like a, it has the spin kicks as per usual and they both break a few boards with one punch <laughs> the only thing i have about this bit is that one it's pretty cool and two as I was doing research for this episode, for, for the recording, I, I found a review of this episode online. I'm not going to say by who, because I don't want people flaming people. Everybody got that? He literally says, oh, this, this karate sequence at the end is stupid. I literally have seen Hercule be, do this with a stone block and also tear a phone book in half. These two teenage losers have nothing on Mr. Satan. And I'm like, you're comparing an animation to live action. Yeah. Not <laughs> just animation. They're comparing like one of the like fucking let's be honest in dragon ball z the actual strongest humans out there like least strongest bill but again that, that, that's still some bragging rights but these are still fucking teenagers and adult versus teenagers and even still i'd say even with the power rangers they're on a relatively similar power level i'm just imagining this person he should have gone even farther like you know what no you are a failure to your family you should be disowned you're you should be dumped you should be uh left homeless foodless blind deaf and stupid <laughs> that just that just sounds like the like a version of you're dead your friends are dead your family's dead your fucking parent pa pets are being skinned alive jesus i want his dog dead i want his house burnt to the ground i want to go to the middle of the night i want to piss on his ass andre's had too much coffee what you yes. never seen the the uh uh what the, the untouchables, untouchables i know yeah. what you're quoting so you think you're untouchable word life this is basic thugonomics. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Oh, 
don't get me started otherwise i'll do the whole thing karate sequence actually gets a really good crowd reaction and they leave and are very happy and then ernie says next up is bulk and skull the main it's, event it's tenacious b ha! no <laughs> and uh yeah they they do what can loosely be described as a performance i was really curious as to what they were saying so i spent hours looking for a transcript god damn so god. here is the song front front to back my name is bulk my name is skull ever get envious watching us roll we're tough we're mean and that's the truth because <laughs> we're bad we're bad all you geeks out there better be scared yeah better be scared because we're cool how cool so cool <laughs> And that is the song. Uh, Please tell me it didn't take long for you to find this. It took me at least an hour. Oh, dear God, no! If we were in the same province right now, I'd give you a hug. Yeah, I need to give you a <laughs> hug next time. I figured it out. It took me a while, but I did find it. They have their little stupid thing. And after after they bomb, also I have to point out, while they're doing this performance, their drummer is an escaped convict. <laughs> it's literally a guy in prison stripes. It's one of their lost members of their gang from the early episodes. I don't know. <laughs> also, I another thing I need to point out about this, this whole performance is I love how the guitar strap for Bulk's bass is caution tape. They, they do the, the risky business and they flip out, end up on their knees on stage, and no one is clapping. Everyone's just staring at them like this is the most saddest wake they've ever been to. And who is the one person that gives them a few claps? It's Kimberly. <laughs> She's a nice girl, but... Uh, yeah. <laughs> and so Kimberly was marked for death, actually not for death. She was marked for pregnancy by Skull <laughs> at that moment. <laughs> da, 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 da. So that, that was the yokes on you. I actually, you know what? I, I like this episode. This was an entertaining episode. I'm sorry. I forgot about one last thing. For fuck's sake! I completely glossed over it because I wanted to get to the Bulk and Skull performance. But after the, uh, after they defeated Fang, Tommy said, oh boy, they've been so great, guys. I hope I could be a Green Ranger forever. Oh, right mm. in the right in the fields. Hmm. Mm, right in the. You want to be a Green Ranger forever? I want. So anyway, let's get to Green there. Candle Part One, where uh, Tommy just stops being a Green Ranger. Oh my. <laughs> Depression time. Oh my. Time to be sad. Yeah. So this is uh, season one, episode 34 and 35, part one and part two, respectively. Together, the episodes were written by Mark McCain, Stuart St. John, Gary Glassberg, and directed by Robert Hughes. Mm, finally, someone that isn't Terrence H. Winkless. Robert Hughes, uh, just for information's sake, he worked on Teamwork, Food Fight, Green with Evil, part five, and gung-ho oh the episode food fight i thought you meant the fucking movie never mind that shit no no the episodes don't worry we're safe i still have nightmares about brand x brand x brand x no god please no 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 <sighs> anyway so green candle part one green candle part one so we, we open up with the gang in the youth center doing what looks like a uh, karate demonstration with uh, Zach and Tommy. I, I'm sorry, Malcolm. I need to inform you that we didn't open with that. We actually opened with... Today on Power Rangers. The first, Thanks first for time. reminding me. This is the first time that they've uh, done it on the show with Today on Power Rangers, which the exception of two-parters, which uh, instead of Today on Power Rangers, they'll do last time on power rangers so yeah they're they're oh, doing a karate yeah. demonstration <laughs> with some of the uh, best five seconds of karate we see them do because this is probably the two phys uh, most physically fit actors in the show just going to town on each other we're just done with phrasing right that's not a thing anymore it's because uh, it's because it's Tommy and Zach. It's the battle of a uh, karate versus hip hop keto. So after we get the demonstration here, we get the uh, first talking of what I believe is there. Are, are they talking about the dance here or are they just talking about his relationship with Kimberly? No, I think they are talking about. Didn't you ask her out to something? I don't know if it was the dance. Uh, Tommy's going like, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know if I have a chance. And Zach goes like, you dumb fuck. She's been on you ever since day one. Come on, if I have no chance with Angela, you have infinite chance with Kimberly. <laughs> just, just dumbass. I also want to point out Tommy's shirt in this scene. It's uh, glorious. It's yeah, it's glorious. You know what? I, 
Oh, it's absolutely amazing. I forgot about the shirt. That It's a buy me that shirt. I'm going full Fuck. 90s now. Yeah. Anyways, I, I can't believe I never thought to do this bit. Meanwhile, at Bandora Castle, no, 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 no. Using the fucking Transformers music full on odds. Yeah, so they're playing um, Dungeons and Dragons. They're setting up the map uh, with Bandora as the DM. It looks like Watts the cleric, fucking uh, Goldar the bard. barbarian, and Babu is the uh, is the is the eye candy. He's the bard. And uh, so I believe and what they're doing is many. they are setting up the trap for Tommy because they finally have decided to execute. I believe if we want to be complete. Completely honest, uh, Rita's last actual villainous act that is like a victory in a hindsight. Plan that I, a plan that I like to call option C. C for mini, candle. I got a little mini rant on this candle. So the green the candle, green. a mystical yes. waxy substance that, that of course is probably made in China and written right on the bottom of the candle. Oh, oh wait, no, made in Japan, sorry. When the candle's wax runs out or when the wick runs out, supposedly Tommy's powers as the Green Ranger will be transferred over to Rita and he will be evil once again. Also, we got Goldar's good voice in this episode again. He's back. <laughs> Finally! That's right! I'm Jason Voorhees and I'm here to slay you the Power Rangers once and for all. And then Rita says Amazing. she has a map and can locate Tommy. Excuse me, what? Excuse me, what? You mean oh, to God. tell you mean to tell me you can find Tommy this entire time? The whole time, the, the whole time you would the whole time. Even though every other episode trying to get to him, and all it took was a map and this little staff. And you can point anywhere yeah, and say, Where the fuck is Tommy? and it can just find it. You mean you can that tell could... me you can locate Tommy any fucking time? Don't I have to go. For being honest, though, if you think about it, she's kind of she she kind of knows where they are most of the time with looking at them through her telescope. But then, like, they have to like uh, put in like some specific thing where they can find Tommy like exact location, even though he's using her kaleidoscope. No, what's it called? The uh... kaleidoscope, <laughs> not kaleidoscope. Her telescope. Her telescope and find them anytime. But for some reason, Tommy is. Special. Has her kaleidoscope on another floor of Bandora Castle. Exactly. Yes. It's also a telescope shape. What I love about this map, there's a few locations that I was able to point out. There's specifically two locations I was able to read. Uh, one of them is Nomad's Land. More funny location is Minar. M-N-A-R. Minar! I hate Menar. I was thinking more of Matt Menard. Daddy, Daddy magic. magic. Oh my goodness. So we get another scene of them practicing. Uh, cut back to the juice bar. And then we get them talking about uh, the dance again. And then we get Zach showing how it's done, basically, as he says. Uh, doing his, looks like a ballerina hip-hop keto hybrid. And who's he doing this to? Angela. Uh, Pure evil. Angela. Oh yeah, I, Angela. Yeah. Angel, I, I did not say pure evil. I said Angel. <laughs> she is once again as cold as ice, yes. right to his face. Get alive! Hello, darkness, my old friend. Also, Zach's like talking about like this is how you're supposed to get a girl right in front of her. And but no, I mean, she just decides to be completely cold. So then uh, Zach decides to tell her that you know what that that's fine. See you next Tuesday. And then Bulk and Skull decide to come. <laughs> <out>. <laughs> Why are you guys laughing? I I I I I, I didn't do anything. So then Bulk and Skull come out. They enter the juice bar. And this is another iconic shot, and it's only iconic to me because the image that Andre has used for the second episode, aka the first episode I was ever on. Yeah, yeah second and then first. Uh, yeah, it ain't confusing. And then honestly, like uh, the only thing I remember from this scene is that Bulk does a. I wrote in the note, Bulk. Uh, bulk pulls a flying nun and then puts his jacket over his head. I, I put in my notes, Bulk is Cornholio. Are you threatening me? Nay, my bunghole will ask the questions. <laughs> I'm disappointed myself. I just saw Beavis and Butthead do America literally yesterday. You know what? Shame on me. <clears throat> <laughs> Hey, I'm Cornholio. I need cheese my bunghole. This episode sucks. Uh, hey, Beavis. Uh, this episode sucks ass. Damn, how do you do these voices so good? Yes, yes. It's, it's, in, it's in its cerebral cortex. It's deep within my brain. They live to run free. Oh, 
Get over there! It's pure agony. Anyway, so Rita is, is uh, <laughs> passing the spell on the green candle, and it's the same shot where he's she, uh, the green with evil shot. And I'm just like, where's Barai? I wrote here, uh, Gin Julia Ro- Ro- Roberts. Gin Julia, <laughs> Julia Roberts. Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, just... that, that has all the workings of a 10 out of 10. Oh, I love it so much. And, and then we cut back to uh, Green Candle Part 1. I mean, we cut back to Bandora Castle praying to Satan. And then I have uh, an, another uh, note here, which is, says, it looks like Goldar's seconds away from trying to drink the candle. And what I love about this bit with uh, Goldar explaining what's going to happen because he says oh he's gonna light the candle and the green ranger is gonna lose his powers and then <laughs> three orders of garlic chicken and then three orders of white rice and then and then three orders of uh wonton soup and then fortune cookies too and then so i think that's about it and then no that's it and then no, and then. and then and then uh you can put it in a brown paper because i'm ready to eat and then oh! No, and then. And then. No, and then. Don't start to piss me off. Then. I'm gonna come in there and I'm gonna put my foot in your ass if you say and then again. Then. Then. <laughs> <laughs> Cut to Kimberly and Tommy, where it looks like fi- uh, Tommy finally is gathering up the courage to tell Kimberly his feelings. And in the background, there's a guy that shat himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. The things I forget while watching this show with you guys. This is why I always put an effort into making sure I have the notes of the background characters, because that's the part that everyone forgets. So then we find uh, again fucking hell get another putty fight with tommy because Wait, he before the putty fight tommy's trying to get the courage and the ducks are laughing behind him <laughs> all right here it goes um half lag ask about it at work yeah the ducks are now <laughs> nagging tommy come on you fool God. <laughs> We went from Tommy nagging Kimberly in almost every episode to Tommy being nagged by himself to t- Zordon nagging Tommy to now Ducks nagging Tommy. <laughs> yeah. The circle is now complete. So then we get the putty fight and Tommy and Kimberly are, of course, doing all the flips, kicks, and then she straight up does like the Karate Kid remake move where it's like... <laughs> Like the beginning of his training where he's like, take off your jacket, hang up your jacket, put on your jacket, take off your jacket. And then she does like the double palm straight to a putty's chest, probably giving it a heart attack. Or at least they're jump starting his heart. <laughs> Do putties have hearts? I mean, they're probably made of clay, so I'm gonna go with no. Yeah, I don't think so. No, I I, I, f- I feel like they're literally just clay, and and they don't have like souls or anything, so they're kind of like uh, they're like snails. They're like magically charged clay constructs. I wonder if they have deep, meaningful conversations about humanity, or if literally what they're saying in putty ease is literally translates out to. <laughs> Stay off the weed. That's probably what it is. In fact, that's my head cannon now. But unfortunately, it does seem they're still smart enough to capture Tommy because that's exactly what they do. And unfortunately, it leaves Kimberly doing in agony. I just forgot about what's coming up. God damn it. Tommy gets Tommy napped. Yeah, and Tommy gets taken to uh, an old place, a familiar place. It's Bobbity's spaceship. <laughs> And for some reason, I, I I wrote here the return of Quagmire. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hold on, no, no, no. I think I I remember something about this. We were talking about how he goes back and it's Quagmire or something. <laughs> Yeah. It still kills me because even in my notes, I have crossed out Hornswoggle. Yeah, Return of Hornswoggle. <laughs> New amazing fight scene with Tommy and Goldar. It was better than Jason Goldar. Ooh, oh, hot take. Hot take. Hot take. Jason Goldar is the summer. No, 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 listen to me. Jason Goldar is the Brett Owen SummerSlam 94 of my Power Rangers watching. Spicy. It's garbage. Damn. Okay. Because it's just like it's just Jason hiding in the mist 
trying to get his communicator. But the the fucking fog is so thin that Goldar can clearly see him. Don't forget, his eyes are red, so he can only see red. He's a white man. <laughs> Goldar sees no color. He just sees red. He has black hair. <laughs> no. I hate that fight. Go to Skull Corner. Finster brings out which monster, Malcolm? Oh, fuck. Brings out the cycle. Anyways, so I just want to. I want to also point out that the green candle looks like it's doing fireworks when it's being burned down. So it just looks like it's an irradiated, irradiated uranium candle. Uranium fever has gone and got me down. Uranium fever is spreading all around. When the guy down there in my head, Golden Golden State, me some government land. Uranium fever is burning up and down. Is is that a Fallout song? Yes, Fallout 4 specifically. I had a feeling. That is probably the song when I think of Fallout. Meanwhile, at the command center. Da, da, da. Let's try this again. Da, 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 da. God damn, why don't we have awesome like transitions anymore in cartoons? We really do need more of that. Wait, do I have to start ranting again? Like, do, I'm going... I'm, I'm gonna have a bitch fit. <laughs> no, kind of we don't. We, Malcolm, no. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Okay, no. good. <laughs> Meanwhile, at the command center, we get the gang trying to figure out how to save Tommy and figure out where he is. Mm -hmm. But then, unfortunately, the alarm goes off and at the viewing club, they see what looks like an incredibly pissed off Dragon Zord, most likely from being negged by Tommy. Also, you forgot to mention Kim Steele Zordon's <laughs> line. Fuck the viewing club. Oh, oh yeah. right. Zordon is just in the background like, that's my line, you fucking bimbo. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, Dragon Zord isn't pissed off about Tommy. He's just pissed off that Dave fucking broke into his house. Dave's not here! Fucking Dave. At this point, the gang is really giving off energy of a bunch of people who work together and spend way too much time to each other and now just hate each other. It's just The Office. <laughs> like, Office season eight, or like the the last one like the worst season of the office the one yeah. deleted scene where this is true jim cheated on pam oh yeah no wonder they did that jim should never cheat on pam <laughs> god damn it malcolm i would be like if batman cheated on robin <laughs> whoa, 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 what? <laughs> and then the joker's over there like bro what the fuck i thought we had something <laughs> special i thought we had something special and yeah, the joker's like oh my god he's such a home wrecker, and then he just walks off. So then, uh, cue the Dragon Zord. Uh, yeah, the fake Dragon Zord fake. fight after the Rangers Moor. Because it's an imposter like Among Us. <laughs> Goldar first uh, Fifty Shades of Grey Tommy in some chains and then leaves. <laughs> Yeah, he gets him in them shackles. And now I'm just thinking of Gilbert Gottfried reading Fifty Shades of Grey. When he hits my clitoris! <laughs> Mr. Grey, Tommy will see you now. Malcolm, you have a better Gilbert Gottfried voice. You say it. I am not doing my Gilbert Gottfried voice at 10 at night, okay? I will get evicted. You say clitoris, uh, Robbie may think like, what the fuck? No, I, again, I he, he will jazz me from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Clitoris! Ah! And, and then we get a brief uh, fight scene with the putties, and then to uh, the dragon zord being incredibly pissed off, and then once again, two zord sequence. I have a question. Uh, this might show up later, so you're free to cut this out. But in my notes, I have how to get burned. When is this? Get burned! How to get burned? So, so then we get a uh, brief fight with uh, with the dragon faker, and then uh, we get the mega zord fighting the fake dragon's horde. Oh, and, and then Goldar gets beamed back into uh, into the holding cell that Tommy's in. And then we get, I want to say, the beginning of round two fight. And then Tommy finally uh, actually manages to escape and gets his morpher back. He steals the sword and teleports out of there and then morphs. Doesn't he, like, slash his chains at some point, or does he get released by Goldar? Uh... I think he gets released by Goldar to start the fight again, and that's why I said uh, round two... 
Tommy joins and, the fight and, then, and calls uh, upon the real Dragon Zord. And, yeah. and then he gets hit once, and then transforms from uh, transforms from uh, the Dragon Zord to he ends up going through all like uh, the different forms, yeah, all the different combinations they've done so far. <laughs> Dragon Zord in fighting mode. Uh, they transform into the main Megazord, and then until I think they uh, just uh, stay uh, the Cyclops again. And the Cyclops, I I might be wrong, uh, but I'm pretty sure the Cyclops in this episode in the original in the Zhu Ranger, it's supposed to be a Nurikabe, which is a type of Japanese yokai that shape shifts into like did he basically makes doors disappear. It it's a type of yokai in Ghostwire Tokyo. It's a very very fun thing to deal with oh you just gave me an idea for a freaky monster of my own like like imagine if you break a specific condition and when you do this condition and then fall asleep immediately afterwards you wake up all the doors are gone all the vents are gone all the windows are gone the only thing that's left is the closet but you have to stay or you have to keep it shut even though you, you think it's the only way out but then unfortunately you're never seen again Yo, that's messed up. Or, or no, like w once you open it up. Uh, right. Okay. That's oh, freaky. That's I think I just came up with the creepy pasta. So then we cut back to the, to completely get back on track. We cut to uh, the command center and uh, we get them scanning Tommy to see if he's okay. But unfortunately, this doesn't seem to be the end of his troubles. And then Billy says, "I think I can try the gamma try system in order to see if I can." Do something. Gamma try system. What the fuck? Yes, that's what he said. A gamma try system. Yeah. Isn't this also where the exposition for the green candle is dumped on the rangers? Yeah, like yes. once the green candle extinguishes, you'll be losing your powers forever. And Tommy acts like, oh shit, I'm gonna die. Yeah, this well, is where I put into my notes option C for candle. Wow. Because it's literally, it's literally Rita Repulsa's option C. Like you can't, you you can't get Tommy back willingly, so you have to just option C out of him. It's just like TNA. <laughs> oh fuck! And now the end of an era. Green Candle Part Two. Yeah. Take it away. So we start in the command center, and Zordon's saying like, "Oh, the only way you can save Tommy, and hopefully he doesn't do side quests anymore, is to go into uh, Babadoc spaceship, whatever you called it, and Bobbity's get, spaceship, oh, Bobbity's spaceship, and get Bobbity's spaceship. again the candle and yourself. Yes, he's going. He's going to the Babadook's spaceship. Babadook. <laughs> <laughs> One of you has to go in there. It can't be Tommy though, because uh, Rita will expect it. No, actually, no. I think the actual reason he's not supposed to go back himself is because if he goes back, it accelerates the rate at which the green candle burns out. Right, that too. Oh, uh, okay. Or to like funny. using his power drains it, like uh, in another season later on. Mm -hmm. Intent, hint, wink, wink, stadium. <laughs> so yeah, Jordan says like, "What do you have to go there?" And then Jason stands up and says like, "I'll do it." Wait. What'd he say? Oh, yeah, Jason was like, I will do it. I'll do it for my boy, Tommy. <laughs> oh, my God. Drown me. And this starts Jason's guilt arc. Guilty about, guilt trip. Yeah, this is the start of his guilt trip where he always feels guilty for losing uh, Tommy's powers. And uh, so they're saying, like, how can we go back? Because, like, we don't know how. And Billy goes... I have an idea. I have and then he pulls out these amazing, uh, his amazing new invention, the giant 90s taser. <laughs> the giant 90s tuning forks. The electric tuning fork. Oh, and then to electrify your enemies and sound good as, while doing it. You know, it's either that or you use the electric tuning fork to tune the electric triangle. Uh, so we cut back to Rita saying like, ah, Goldar, make sure you guard that goddamn candle. I'm going to be on your ass if you don't. Goldar goes, okay. We got that. <laughs> <laughs> we, okay. Okay. We got back to command center and Billy already invented the molecular decoders. So the tuning fork explains that, hey, in order to get to where we need to go, we need to put them in two places and turn them on at the same time. So the park it is. Uh, okay. Everything's fine to start, except, you know, they could have just become the Power Rangers for this and just avoided the hassle. But, you know. Kim is saying encouraging words to Tommy. 
Jason is and the gang are like smiling and goes like, hey, he's getting some tonight. We cut back to Pandora the Castle park. and Bob. Oh, no, it's Bob, Pandora, yeah. <laughs> said Bob and Squat. What? He, Bob and Squat talking about the Cyclops and how he did a great yeah. job. You mean, oh, yeah. right. Like, you got to go back to her down again and make sure you do the job right. You just you just called Babu Bob? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did call Bob. Babu Bob. <laughs> He's with Pandora. Scott and Bob. Scott and Bob. <laughs> we cut to the park and the rangers are setting up the tuning forks and then we have Bulk and Skulls just making monkey sounds in the grass. <laughs> Bulk Man and, and uh, Murder Robin. Yeah, and they notice the, got the gang on top of the hill and they go like, what the hell are they doing? Let's go fuck it up for no reason. Then Bulk does a fat man going up a hill, which is to say hard. They do a Batman 60s TV show where they uh, look like they're going up against building, but they're not. Yeah, and then you can see that Bulk is clearly crying a little inside. So, and, and then uh, after uh, a brief fight scene, he ends up uh, hopping in uh, the garbage can, right? No, they he, head up he, the hill, yeah. and Bulk is sweating like a maniac. And then yep. they start a little fight, and they wind up going down the hill. Yeah, the, what is it, Bulk, or is it Skull that gets in the can? Bulk as it goes into the garbage can. And... Bulk is in the can, and then he rolls down the hill like a barrel. A barrel roll! <laughs> I think as a kid, I actually attempted the, like, tire trick. Oh, God. Um, because of, like, scenes like this. And, uh, don't, kids, don't do it. Don't, don't do, do it. it. You can do it! Because unlike this bit where he rolls down the hill, you will not hear funny cartoon noises. You'll hear your suffering. Yeah, no, instead you'll hear your bones breaking. <laughs> We come back to the command oh center goodness. and Alpha 5 trying to cheer Tommy up. All of a sudden, the, the alarm goes off and the Cyclops is as the fake Dragon Zord again. And Tommy goes like, but how? Bro, you just fought him last episode. How do you not know it's the fake Dragon Zord? Yeah, he teleported yeah. away and everything. Mm hmm. Yet yeah. here we are. Tommy once again thinking with his dick and not with his brain. Kim's not here. <laughs> well, no, he was thinking with his second brain. So Zordon mm -hmm. was like, oh, you can't go, Tommy. You're still trying to get your can. Tommy's about to leave and Zordon's like, Tommy, no. No. <laughs> Tommy, no. Tommy goes, fuck you. I'm going. I'm morphing. Bye. Bye, Felicia. So he morphs and goes down to the city. Calls his Dragon Zord, and we got a Dragon Zord versus Dragon Zord fight. Pretty awesome. But the dragon, fake Dragon Zord turns into the Megazord. Yeah. Imagine if he combined with them. I wonder what abomination that would create. So Sarita seeing this, and she goes like, oh, yes, it's going great. And then we cut back to the, the fight. And for the first time ever, we see Tommy inside the Dragon Zord cockpit, which is nice looking. And the only time we see him in the Dragon cockpit... Which I'm really surprised they didn't do this sooner. Like, I didn't think he was capable of it. Like, he was, like, uh, his own, like, like the Dragon Zord was alive, and so he had to pilot him only outwards, because there are some other Zords that do that later on as well. But then we get this shot, and it looks cool, so why the hell didn't we get it sooner? I know, right? They exactly. Want, I think they just want to say it for this episode. All right, now let's go get him! Maybe, yeah. Like, they only save it for important occasions. And, and then we, I forget, like, I gotta bring this up. We get an amazing shot of it looks like uh, the Megazord is being, like, he's wearing, like, a wire suit. And then he just does, like, a freaking, like, flying kick. It's pretty good. It's giving me vibes of Godzilla's drop kick. <laughs> Does the Dragon Zord do that, please? We get a really good fight between the Dragon Zord and the Cyclops. They're fighting, and Rita goes like, Goldar, how's the candles? Like, Goldar goes like, oh, it's almost at the end. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> they don't have much time. We cut back to the yeah. park, and Jason goes like, okay, I'm ready, Zordon. What do I do? And Zordon goes, go in, stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry up, dumbass. Stupid. Stupid. So he goes in, and then he goes back to the Bobbity spaceship. And Goldar shows mm -hmm. up. And we have Goldar versus Jason round two. Is this a better fight than last time? Yes. It's not a stupid cat and mouse game in the fog. So that's an immediate improvement. That's good. That's really good. Because mm. I like this fight. Uh, now that I see it, like, oh, yeah, he falls down in the fog again. And you're riffing it like, please don't do this shit again. Yeah, I fucking almost had a hernia. We cut back to the park and Kim goes like, he's been in there way too long. It's only been like, what, 45 seconds? Yeah. It's only been one minute fucking... Take a chill pill. Jeez. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we cut back to command center and Zoran goes like, oh shit, Tommy's getting his ass kicked. We need to hurt his up. 
somebody help. And Zach goes like, okay, I'm going to go in there and get Jason because he ain't doing it. He's not doing anything. And Zach really is a, a bigger heavy hitter than I realized in this show. He's basically second in command. So he goes in and uh, he stops Jason from fighting. He goes like, Z Jason, come on, we gotta go. It it's not worth it. We gotta go. There's no time. And Goldar is like making fun of him. He's like, you're all in trouble now. And then Jason's like, I but I need to get the candle though. <laughs> I'm gonna save Malcolm a brain cell and not do it this one time. Okay. Thank you. Uh, why did I write down lose his life here? What does this mean? We don't get to him in time. He'll lose his life. He's not going to die. He's just going to lose his Power Rangers powers. So Jason leaves and they go back to the park and they morph and they join the fight. Megazord gets called up. And Cue the Megazord sequence. So they make the Mega Dragon Zord, call upon the Titanus and make the Ultra Zord. And he is a friend. Yes. <laughs> they destroy so Cyclops and Jason goes down and goes like, yo, I think I can still get that candle. Wait on me, I'll be back. Hold my beer. So, uh... <laughs> hold my beer. We cut yeah, back to... Hold my beer. We cut back to Goldar and says, like, Oh, Jason yay. drinks while piloting the Megazord. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we cut back to Goldar and says, like, Oh, yes, the candle has extinguished. Tommy's power is no more. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> he, get, he gets a DUI zording yeah. under the influence. Well, no, it, it wasn't that the candle... Um, it, it was specifically when the candle runs out uh the next time tommy uses his powers he would be under rita's control again and unfortunately to in order to prevent that tommy has to pass his ranger powers to another ranger to keep himself from turning evil like we get back to the command center and jason goes like i can still make it zordon i can still make it and zordon goes like you failed man give it up man. get over it get over it i know you're gonna be guilty for the next couple of episodes but give it up man and then we get the saddest parts. Zoran goes like, Tommy, you gotta give your power coin to someone or else the power will go back to Rita. I guess this is it, huh? And guess this is it, huh? Yeah, that's... Oh, God. <laughs> that, that's so sad. So he gives his power coin to Jason and Jason gets the coin and the, sh the rubber shield. Jason gets the, the fucking felt golden shield, which honestly I thought was a cute moment, even though the shield was shit. Yeah, it was a good moment, like, but the, the shield is crap because like it's the American version. And Tommy just uh, falls down because his powers are weakening because like he's being demorphed. He's being detached from the morphing grid. So we come back to Bandora Castle and Rhea goes like, how the hell do we not have the power coin? I thought I won. And Goldar goes like, oh, uh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> Goldar is our truth. And we come back to command center. Go, uh, Tommy is still demorphing. I, I was actually gonna call him Goldurkle. 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 Oh. Did I do that? God damn it! That's yeah. so good. <laughs> yeah. Tommy says he feels weird. Jordan goes like, "That's your body getting used to like not having the power anymore. You are a great ranger. You will be remembered." No, that's puberty. God damn it. <laughs> you were a great ranger and an honorable man, except for those five times you negged Kimberly. <laughs> Only five? So Tommy yeah. goes like, he loses all his powers. Like five dozen. So Tommy loses all his powers, and now he's just a civilian. He goes like, I'll miss you guys. Man, you'll see him on Monday, dude. You're, <laughs> you're at the same school. <laughs> like, it's not like you're never going to see him again. Well, it is. We'll get to that eventually. But you'll see him on Monday. Come on, chill. Relax. So Tommy says his goodbyes. We cut to the park where he's practicing his kung fu martial arts kim comes along and wants to get her dick wet what what <laughs> uh kim goes like hey tommy how are you feeling tommy goes like uh i'm getting used to it being a civilian and all but kim i got something to ask you it's like uh anal <laughs> anal. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> <laughs> I love the Malcolm. I love when you just say something that just completely subverts the expectation and you break both of us. <laughs> oh, shit. Tommy grabs anal. <laughs> Anal? <laughs> it's Anal. my la it's my last day. Why not? Anal? Will you stop? So Anal. Tommy grabs Kim's hands and then they forget. And kiss. does anal. 
<laughs> no, uh, to be serious for a minute, like, Tommy and Kim both kiss each other for the first time, which is the first time ever, and then they kiss another time and a second time, and that was that's pretty much it. Yeah, actually, and no. Adam, uh, a fun fact: there is like there is quite a few romances in Power Rangers, but at this point, nobody like, kisses. Nobody kisses. But then and that, later that's... on, they go like, "Violence is cool, but kissing? No, we're crossing the line on that." <laughs> Cross the line. TNA wrestling. Cross the line. So, bah, bah, wait, bah. No, not yet. <laughs> I know, I know. So, uh, Tommy goes like, hey, I've been wanting to do that a long time. Anyway, would you like to go to the dance with me? And Kim says, no, fuck you, and you're a nerd. Bam, bam, ba -dum, ba -dum. <laughs> Hello, darkness, my old friend. No, no, no. no. They he says yes. Kim says yes. She goes, I had to make you work for it. Like, you couldn't get it that easily. I didn't want to make it too easy for you. Now you have to work for anal. <laughs> 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 and that's how you end an episode so the backstory of this jason frank this was officially his last episode he was the only uh contracted for a certain amount of episodes and plus barai died in the super sentai so they didn't have much sentai footage of him so they go like yeah yeah so we're getting rid of you <laughs> And uh, Jason David Frank was going to go do the uh, show VR Troopers. He even shot the first pilot of it, and it's on YouTube. Mm -hmm. He was supposed yeah. to be Ryan Steele. Then uh, kids were complaining and saying, like, hey, we missed the Green Ranger. We're not eating. We're depressed. And I was hired for, like, 10 to 15 episodes. So was there a rumor where when you uh, lost your powers that uh, people around the world petitioned, kids petitioned to bring me back? They were calling Fox saying, I'm not eating, not going to school, literally. And, you know, getting a call from, I don't care. They care about numbers. They care about lawsuit. They care about their, their perception of public. So they instantly said, we need this guy back. I don't care. Bring him back. Kids aren't eating. Parents are calling us, not in, not emailing, because we didn't have all that stuff back then. They were calling the studio, uh, Fox Studios. You need to bring Green Ranger click. Hi, right, Fox Studios. I can't believe you didn't click. Over and over and over again. And uh, so they brought me back. We're not eating. <laughs> <laughs> My kid's depressed. He's not eating. What's Who's this Green Ranger guy? And the legend continues with Tommy. Later. This was officially his last episode. <laughs> you see, what throws me off is that children weren't just not eating because the Green Ranger wasn't on Power Rangers <laughs> anymore well he was like a very popular it's like i didn't i wasn't like that i go like huh okay he's gone so okay i get the point but also like <laughs> not to get political but this is why i'm not going to have kids yeah <laughs> and the fact that parents wrote into the saban corporation goes like hey man my kid's not eating he's my kid isn't eating <laughs> yeah. he keeps saying hey, bring back my kid's not eating. yeah it's a dog caved in okay we'll bring him back we'll get someone else to be ryan steel and vr trooper by the way sidebar what a great name is Ryan Steele. Yeah, Ryan Steele's a great name. And the guy yes. who played Ryan Steele in VR Troopers went on to be the voice of the Gold Ranger in Zeo. So it was all good Ooh. for him. Best in facts. conclusion. In conclusion, so what do you think of these episodes before we go off? The talent show episode was really good. To me, it just seemed like basic filler, so it is what it is. It was just a fun episode, but so far, I'm gonna say this was actually my favorite story episode for Tommy, because it had it had like actual stakes and you could see that it, there's going to be like consequences for Jason down the line because he feels genuine guilt oh, for what yeah. happened. Very true. And like, yeah, like I said, this starts the story arc of being guilt ridden. So this is a good batch. Yeah, yeah uh, my thoughts are relatively the same. I loved Yokes on You. There was a lot to talk about. Fang. Yeah, yeah Fang. Uh, Fang. But uh <laughs> <laughs> Just the talent show bits in general. Vulcan Skulls, Tenacious D ripoff. The only thing that's missing is uh, Fang's brother, Joker. I'm Joker! Huh. Classic reference to Common Rider W. It's a very fun episode as the yolks on you. Green Candle, I'm going to say it, better than Green with Evil. Green with Evil is not as good as Green Candle, in my opinion. I think Green Candle has a, the advantage of not being an hour and a half long. Mm -hmm. It's not like five <laughs> and, episodes. And, uh, it was only two. Yeah, yeah it has the advantage of not being the first Power Ranger movie. And they actually like have plot beats that actually make me feel like I care. Whereas Green with Evil was just uh, really long. It, it, was, it was tough to get through. 
through at times. Uh, but Green Candle was very fun. This is a really good batch. I don't know if it's my favorite batch that I've ever seen so far, but it's definitely up there. Strong recommend to watch these episodes. Yeah, I okay. agree. Like, Yolks on You was a pretty good filler, but the Green Candle part one and two brought back uh, painful memories from back in the days. Like, uh... <laughs> Of you not eating. No, not me. Other kids. But I found it like, eh, it's all right. But I missed the Green Ranger. Hey, I'm going to go or eat some it, steak. Or was it painful because of the anal? That too. <laughs> anal? Anal? Stop it! And with that, I believe that's the perfect stopping point for this episode. So, Because Birds of a Feather is next, and then Cleanup Club is where we finally see Billy making some godly martial arts moves. Ooh, we finally get uh, Billy levels up. Yeah, Billy levels the up. Yeah, Billy levels up at, at, since the last time Billy leveled up was uh, with uh, Trini's Uncle Howard. Yeah, very true. <laughs> so next time we're looking for, uh, we're, we're looking forward to some good ones after uh, this big, beautiful bow that uh, Tommy Oliver has wrapped up for us for now uh, right. on this but two-part. Back. He'll be back. The starving kids at home have made sure of that. <laughs> like, hey, my kid is starving. But until then, uh, that's it. Uh, until next time. It's been me. I am Dead Shroom, and uh, I very much appreciate everyone in this process. And also, I'm really enjoying myself. So hey. that's for that's me. And I am humanoid. And remember to feed your kids. And, and I am the doy. And we're going to eat your lunch. <laughs> and, may, and may the power protect you.